First thing I did was get my hair up in a wig cap to go under my bald cap and then quickly laid down my brows by just taking an Elmer's glue stick and a metal spatula. I put two coats over my brows and then flattened them down. After that, I used prosate adhesive to tack down my bald cap by applying the adhesive along my forehead and the inner rim of the latex. And then once it was clear and dry, I just pulled down the edges and smoothed it out. From there, I applied about five layers of liquid latex around the edge to better blend the seam line into my skin. Once everything was dry, I just went over the latex and my brows with translucent setting powder to remove any tackiness and shine. And then from there, I just took a red eyeshadow to map out the shape of the heart eyes that I wanted. For filling the red of the suit, I took a water activated face paint and used a brush for all of the smaller areas and a wet sponge for larger coverage. To help a bit with pigmentation and to mattify the red, I also used the red eyeshadow to buff over the entire area I had just covered. With a gray face paint, I started lining where I wanted definition within the eye shape. I referenced the mask from the movie for the angles and then I just modified them to suit the shape that I had made. Because I wanted to be able to have the eyes opened or closed for this look, I sectioned off the eye space with a white face paint that could act as the eyes if my own were closed. I also made sure, since this was the eyelid area and would easily crease from the face paint, that while it was drying, I took a white eyeshadow and patted it over the entire area to set the lid space. I put a white cream eyeliner along my waterline and then moved back to the mask area. I used a black face paint here to start better defining the lines that I had laid out in gray. I then outlined all of the eye shape as well and cleaned up any edges I had roughly made with the red. For shading along the insides of the eye area, I kind of switched between products to give me the effect I wanted. I used a black cream along the edges so it would have the opaque quality of the face paint but then could actually be blended inwards towards the eye. And then layering on top of that, I also used a black eyeshadow to further soften and blend out those shadows. For this, a lot of the shading was just a build up from the different products. I wanted to keep the inner sides of the eye shapes darker while the outside had a bit more gray to it, just to help give the illusion of the raised surface catching more light on the outside. When the shading was where I wanted it, I went back with the gray face paint to clean up any lines I had blurred and then used the white to further define the area and give a little bit more of a cartoony feel. With a bit of the white and the dampened sponge, I added a bit of highlighting around the face just to help with depth. And then I took a gray and black eyeshadow and mixing them, I started defining the area where the stitching would be. So going along the seam lines above and below the eyes and then going around the heart shapes and blending out as well.
going back to the black face paint and a small detail liner brush, I started creating the stitch lines by just making little drag marks and spacing them apart, going all the way around the areas that I had just shaded with the gray and black shadow. With just a bit of the white and red mixed, I quickly added some highlights to those raised areas between the stitching just to help bring them forward. And then I moved on to the chest and shoulders, first by filling in the choker heart with a bit more of a pink to help it stand out, and then laying out where all of the straps, stitching, and armor pieces are along the shoulders. I used the gray face paint to create the hinges along the neck piece, and while it's hard to see here, I did create a shape that was half of a heart and half of a hinge, because really I was taking any chance I had to play with the design. And then following that, I also laid out the stitching with some shadow again, creating an extra arrow pierced heart along the side. And needing more than just hearts in the design, I started freehanding a rose-like shape along the strap and then built outwards, adding two leaves on the upper area as well. I kept the design a little more simplified because I wanted it to match with the animated feel of the rest of the look. From here, I just jumped back to the black and outlined all of the pieces, as well as filling in the shoulders. I used a detail brush to fill in the black around the rows so as to have better control between the lines. And then I just filled outwards, leaving the edges a bit since I knew I wanted to add lighter colors anyways for highlighting. With the detail brush, I also added a few petal lines along the rows just to give it a little bit more interest. And then I moved on to the heart on the neck, first by just outlining it and then filling in the B mine lettering. Remembering that when you write on yourself, you have to write it backwards in the mirror for it to face forward correctly. I purposely kept the script a little juvenile just because I thought it fit a bit better. After that, I went back and properly defined the hinges and then just filled in the black area. I used the same technique as on the face for the stitching along the suit, better defining the heart and arrow and then filling in other areas of the design that I hadn't really gone over yet. For all of the highlights along the areas that were filled in with black, I just went back with the gray and using that along with a gray eyeshadow filled in the outsides to give more depth. I also added a bit more highlighting to the high points of the shoulders, using more of a padding motion to blend the white so it would give more of a textured weathered look to the black. Taking more of the gray and black eyeshadows, I went along the heart on the neck to give it more interest, and then took those shadows and went around the rest of the body as well to just give a little bit more dimension.
As a finishing touch, I took the white and gray one last time and went around the edges of the body pieces, both to help them stand out even more and to help enhance that cartoony animated feel. Last but not least was to throw in a pair of white mesh contacts, which you can see through, though your vision is rather blurry. And that was it for my Valentine's-inspired Deadpool. Thank you guys so much for watching.